Yo, what it do? S R T gang, it's your boy with the fat swaggy reacts, and we are back with another reaction video. And I told you we about to go back in on these Mr. Balding videos, man. We are far behind. Know what I'm saying? So we about to move on to the next one. Today we're gonna be checking out. It started as a sighting and ended in horror. So. Like, share, comment, subscribe, gang. If you guys like scary content, man, we're on the road to 100K, man. So I'm gonna go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Might as well, like you, or whatever, because you're gonna come back anyway. So you might as well, or whatever, because you're gonna be, um, you know, like waiting for those other videos, man. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you know when I'm dropping a new video, man. So without further ado, man, let's go ahead and get into this thing. Shouts out to Mr. Bowling, man. Let's get into it, gang. Let's get it, man. Today's story is about a disturbing discovery made in Brazil in the 1980s. Uh, now, at the time, the Brazilian government attempted to hide this story, saying it was just too sensitive for the public to know about it. Mm, but eventually, photos really? of this discovery were leaked, and it sent Brazil into a panic. Now, uh -oh. I'm not going to show you uh -oh. any of the actual leaked photographs, because they're just too graphic, but I will be describing them in some detail towards the end of this video. So, viewer discretion is advised. But before we oh, get yeah, into- like, I know y'all be seeing me like sniffle a lot, bro. It's cause the weather's changing, bro. And so like a lot of, you know, like, yeah. I mean, I just hate the weather change. I hate, I mean, I hate the cold weather, bro. Like, like it just, it just, it just folks with my allergies like so bad, bro, for some reason, man. I don't know, man. Do that story. If you're a fan of the strange, dark and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right place because that's all we do. And we upload once a week. So, if that's of interest to you, please offer the like button a can of soda, but be sure you secretly violently shake it before you hand it over. Come on, man. Also, like, that is just so wrong, bro. Like, 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 why would you do that? So you don't like, why? Like, why? Like, why would okay, you do let's that? let's get into today's story. It's exposed. Let's go. On the afternoon of September 29, 1988, a 10-year-old boy named Francisco was walking along the perimeter of a man-made lake in southern Brazil while poking the ground with his stick. Francisco was doing one of his favorite after-school activities, which was looking for bugs. And this lake, which was a part of the Billings Reservoir in the Brazilian state of Sao Paulo, was his favorite place to do that. And the reservoir was gigantic. But it was not shaped like a typical circular lake. Instead, it was more like a big river that kind of wound around and had all these skinny branches kind of jutting off the sides of it. And okay. on this particular day, Francisco was walking along one of those skinny offshoots of this lake, where at certain points, if Francisco wanted to, he could literally swim to the other side of the lake in a matter of minutes. Now, Francisco knew he was not really supposed to be anywhere near this reservoir because in recent years, gangs from the nearby cities would bring their murder victims out to this reservoir and bury them here. Murder so victims? Knew it was what? not a safe place and to stay clear. But Francisco, he didn't listen to any of that because he loved walking around this lake and looking for bugs. And so he thought, you know what? I'm still stuck on murder victims. Hold on, what? Murder victims? What the hell y'all got? No one's harmed me yet, so what's the big deal? And so, as Francisco casually walked along, poking at the mud, looking for his bugs, he finally saw one. It was a huge water scorpion, almost two inches long, and so immediately Francisco, without taking his eyes off the bug, drops his backpack, grabs a clear container that he kept in the side pocket, he opened it up, he bent down, and he scooped up this water scorpion and capped it, and then he brought the container up and looked inside to kind of admire his new pet. And as he was staring at this container, he noticed something odd on the other other side of the lake. He basically saw it through the plastic container. And so he lowered the container to get a better look at this strange thing on the other side of the water. And what he saw was this big group of vultures all kind of standing oh, in a circle no. right on the water's edge. And immediately, Francisco was way more interested in these vultures than in his bug because vultures meant there had to be a dead thing nearby yeah. because vultures are scavengers. Yeah. And so whatever they were circled around was probably a dead animal. But Francisco he looked around and realized there was no way to get to the other side of the water to see whatever this dead thing was unless he swam. 
and he knew if he went back home with soaking wet clothes, his mom would know he had snuck to the reservoir and he'd be in lots of trouble. Mm -hmm. And so, feeling really frustrated, Francisco just picked up a rock and chucked it to the other side, trying to splash the water near the vultures to get them to fly away so he could see the dead thing. But the first rock he threw did not really have an effect. The vultures just kind of turned around and looked at him and then went back to whatever was on the ground. And so Francisco gathered a big pile of like 25 rocks and began throwing them one after the other at these vultures. And finally, Francisco had caused enough chaos on the other side of the water that the vultures got upset and they took to the air and they flew away. And finally, Francisco got a clear view of the dead thing that was in the middle of the circle of vultures. What is now, it, buddy? initially, Francisco dead thought body. this dead thing was going to be maybe a bird or some other small animal from the area, but when he got a good look at this dead thing from 30 feet away, it didn't look like either of those things. It didn't have fur, it didn't have feathers, oh, it actually looked kind of pale, almost like a pig. But Francisco's thinking to himself, why would a pig be all the way out here? And then it slowly dawned on Francisco that what he was looking at the... was actually a dead person. Suddenly terrified, you see what Francisco... I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? I mean, I, are you surprised? Cause they just said, he just said in the beginning that they dropped the murder victims off over here. So I mean, I, I, I mean, like, you didn't think he was gonna come across a body? That's all I'm saying. So scooped up his things, turned around, and ran to the nearest village where he began screaming for help. You feel me? Because he definitely said that, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, they dropped their victims off there. So, nigga, uh, yeah. Yeah. Within a few hours, the area along the water where the vultures had been and where this body was, was swarming with police and also with curious villagers. Normally, right. when a body was discovered in or near this reservoir, which unfortunately happened quite a bit because of all the recent gang violence, mm -hmm. police would often break ranks from the investigation and walk over to the local onlookers and kind of fill them in and tell them, you know, who this person was and what they think happened but this time it was totally different. The police were totally secretive and it was really uh, obvious. See, yeah, the police I know it's Brazil, I mean, I mean like in Brazil and all that shit, like, like they laws and they cops, it seems like they don't give a fuck about what, you know what I'm saying? Just like, 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 just, just these people outside the US, US, I know their laws and like, like are different than ours, you know what I'm saying? But it's just like, the cops just literally don't give a F sometimes. Or, over there, you know what I'm saying? That shit crazy. Immediately roped off the entire area with crime scene tape, and then the police officers stood in a circle, shoulder to shoulder, blocking the view of the villagers so they couldn't see the body. And then when villagers actually walked up to police and said, hey, can you tell us what's going on? The police would say they couldn't talk about it, and then they would tell the villagers to back up and stay away. Locals would stick around for a while, being treated this way the entire time by police, and then finally when the sun started to go down and it was clear the police were very committed to hiding what was going on, whoever was still there finally just left, figuring when they got home they could just turn on the news and see what had happened with this dead person. But when they got home and turned on their TV, there was not one news story about this body. And at a minimum, this story should have dominated local news, but it somehow was not being talked about. And then even stranger was the next morning when locals got up, they headed back to the reservoir to see what the police were up to. And when they got there, they found the police were gone, the body was gone, and there was absolutely no trace that anyone or anything had ever been there. It was like it had been totally sanitized. For days, locals in this area continued to check the TV news, they checked the radio, the newspapers for some story, some bit of information about this dead body that was found. But again, there was just absolutely nothing, and it just made no sense. Why wasn't anyone talking about this? And so eventually, in the absence of any official information about what happened, a rumor began to circulate among locals that the body belonged to a local fisherman who had gone missing three days before Francisco discovered him. And this fisherman, apparently he was an alcoholic, and he'd gone to the reservoir, and he had begun drinking, and apparently he drank so much that it killed him. Now, many people wondered you know if this drunk no 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 that's terrible like again like i had a, 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 a i mean a few friends of mine to get that like, alcohol poisoning but to the point that they actually like die is is insane you know what i'm saying for like so so for for the for the ones who do watch my videos and, and like do drink 
please know your limit, bro. Like, don't overdo it, man. Please, bro. Because a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, like, really can't hold their liquor. And they do things that's going to hurt themselves or hurt someone. So, you know what I'm saying? So, it's like, man, like, that's terrible to hear, man. Like, gosh. He drank so much that it killed him. Now, many people wondered, you know, if this drunk fisherman story was the real story, then why were the police so secretive about the right, body? And right, why weren't they willing right. to give up any information to the crowd about what had happened to this guy? I mean, a drunk fisherman is not a super sensitive thing. It just seemed like that doesn't line up with the police's behavior. Exactly, but questions exactly. like these remained unanswered. And after several weeks of still no new information, no news coverage anywhere, even the most skeptical of villagers who really thought there's something weird going on here, they just kind of forgot about it and moved on. Until so six years saying? later. Like, bro, like, it is six years later. Like, come on, bro. This is six years. Come on, man. Like, people, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, they don't really be caring about these dead bodies that just be popping up and like, like, like bro, y'all gotta do your job, investigate, bro. Like, what are y'all doing, bro? Like, this is like someone could have been murdered. Like, I mean, now they've been free for six years now because y'all didn't do your job, bro. Like, come on, man. Ninety-four, when someone we don't know who from the Brazilian government decided they just couldn't keep the secret any longer. And so they gathered up some photos and an autopsy report they were not supposed to have, and they smuggled those things to the media. And once the media published these things, it became immediately clear that the dead man who was found in the reservoir in 1988 was not a drunk fisherman who drank himself to death. Nor was he the victim oh of gang violence. Oh Instead, it appeared that this person's death could potentially be paranormal. Oh, hell no. Paranormal? Oh, shit. If you're a fan go. of the Strange, Dark, and Mysterious delivered go. in story format, then you gotta listen to the brand new Ballin Studios podcast called Bedtime Stories. For oh, the uninitiated, man. Bedtime Stories has been a long so, like, Mr. Ballin is just doing his thing, bro. Like, like bro, he got so many different, like, bro, like, like, I don't know, it's this other channel that I, um, um, like, follow, too, that he has, um, stories. It's, bro, he has so many different stories, bro, and, like, so many different channels and shit, bro. It's like, bro, this guy grind and, and like, bro, like, determination and dedication is crazy. And he still got the podcast joint that we haven't reacted to yet, which we're going to get to. But it's just like, bro, this is crazy. Now he, he came out with a bedtime story. Pot, you know, okay, come on, man. This guy work at, at, ethic is amazing, man. Incredible YouTube channel that puts out just some of the best dark, scary storytelling on the internet. And now they're making this brand new podcast in collaboration with our studio. So if that you want crazy, some more man. incredible like making, storytelling to like, add... Bro, they're making major moves, bro. And they still got the merch and all that shit, bro. Like, they are doing their thing, bro. So I start to the whole, like, the Mr. Ballin crew, man. Like, everyone who makes every video... Just like, know what I'm saying? Like, salute to y'all, bro, because y'all definitely, like, are doing y'all thing out here, bro. And we appreciate you guys giving us great, great stories, great content, man. It's just really, really feeding the YouTube streets because we need these type of videos, man. These stories, these mind-blowing stories that you guys be, be posting out, man, be putting up, man. We really, really appreciate that shit, man. We really do, gang. And I, and I just wanted to tell y'all that. Salute to Mr. Ballin, his whole crew, everyone who does it. Like, everything that they have to do to make these videos and um, 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 stories on, like, what they are, bro, and just so amazing. Uh, we appreciate you guys, bro. Real talk. Like, we really, really appreciate you guys. And to your weekly roster of content, go to any podcast platform anywhere and search you know for Ballin anywhere. Studios. You, you can go anywhere, bro. Like, and it's going to pop up. You see what I'm saying? You see the hard work and dedication that these guys put into their, like, channels, bro? Like, I love it, bro. I love it, bro. On Bedtime Stories. I they put it. out new episodes every single Wednesday. Here's a clip from this week's episode called Without a Trace. Man, the northwestern state suspense. of Alaska remains one of America's most unsettled and unexplored regions. It is a place of wonder and mystery, but also of great danger, with roughly two and a half thousand people going missing there every year. Hell no. And one settlement, situated what? far to the west of the state, remains the setting for some of the most bizarre of these disappearances. 
Yeah, hell no, nah, bro. How many people a year? Two hundred and something a year? Hey man, stop. Hey man, don't be doing that, man. You got me. I'm kind of scared. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Get out of here. Back to story time, man. But before we dive into the significance of those leaked photos and the leaked autopsy report, you need to understand a weird aspect of Brazil's history. Brazil has an absolutely astounding number of sightings of unidentified flying objects, or UFOs for short. And whoa, these are- Whoa, 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 hold on. Whoa, we don't got time for this here, dog. Hold up now. Not what? your typical UFO- Hey, y'all know how we feel about these UFOs and all that shit on these videos already. You know what I'm saying? Chills and all these guys. Yeah, bro. Um, slapped ham. All these other uh, video, yeah, bro. Like we came across a, a good amount of videos that got UFOs in them, bro. Those stories where some person claims they saw aliens or they were abducted by aliens, but they have no witnesses, they have no proof, they have nothing but their own story. Oh, no, man. in Brazil, the bulk of their UFO sightings are reported by their military because Brazil actually has a government program to monitor UFO sightings because it happens so much in their country. In fact, what? the Brazilian government was directly involved in one of the most famous UFO sightings of all time. It was called the Night of the UFOs. This famous sighting, or sightings, because it actually happened in four different Brazilian states simultaneously, happened on May 19th, 1986, which was two years before Francisco spotted the dead body in the reservoir. On that 1986 day at around 8.15 p.m., an air traffic controller at an international airport in Sao Paulo noticed three red lights hovering over the airport, and so the controller called whoa, in and asked whoa, 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 what the hell is that? Bro, now look. I know the UFOs and shits are normally, well, I, I don't know what color. I, mean, I would say white or something like that. or like, like I ain't never seen no red ones, bro. Like, and this can't be no tower or nothing like that has flashing red light. Nah, bro, this is something, nah. What are these things? But nobody knew. And at the exact same time, all across Brazil, dozens and dozens of other people who have no idea what's happening at this international airport began reporting that they too were seeing strange lights in the sky. Bro. And many of these reports of these lights were coming from military personnel and government officials. And so this was like a really big deal that like all across Brazil, everybody's seeing lights in the sky. And so the government in response to this scrambled their fighter jets and sent the jets up to try to intercept one of these sets of lights just to see who or what they were and potentially shoot them down if they had to. But when these jets got anywhere close to these unidentified flying objects, these lights in the sky, these UFOs would move away like instantly. One UFO was observed. Whoa, what? Yo, nah, hell nah, bro. See, see, that's why we need to leave them alone, bro. Leave them alone. Let them do whatever they gotta do, bro. Leave these niggas alone. Like they, you know what I'm saying? Like, Lord Jesus, see, all right, bro, we gonna get into a fight that we can't get ourselves out of. Y'all better stop playing. Suddenly disappearing and then reappearing 20 miles away in just five seconds, which meant that UFO had to travel at least five times the speed of sound to cover that distance in such a short amount of time. That's crazy. For reference, humans are not capable of going that fast. We cannot do that. Eventually, the night of the UFOs ended when all these UFOs, these lights in the sky, just kind of suddenly vanished. And then a couple of days later, the Brazilian government held this big press conference about the event, and they would say, we have no idea what those lights were or where they came from. We have no clue. However, Man, whoever bro. or whatever was controlling these UFOs showed obvious signs of intelligence. Now, as mind-blowing as that would be to hear that, to hear that potentially intelligent creatures are flying around your airspace, Remember, this is Brazil, where UFO sightings were kind of the norm, and so people were definitely shocked by this. This was a terrifying thing, but they just kind of accepted what they were told and assumed, you know, the government will handle this, and people moved on with their lives. That is, until several years later, in 1994, when those photos and the autopsy report of the dead person in the reservoir were leaked, and then suddenly the people of Brazil, they're seeing this stuff, and they're realizing, wait a minute, 
The night of the UFOs may not have been an isolated instance. Those UFOs may never have left. Here is what the public learned from the leaked photos and the leaked autopsy report. Back in 1988, when little Francisco spotted the dead body from the other side of the water, he correctly identified that it was a man's body. But Francisco had been wrong when he told authorities that it didn't look like this guy had any visible injuries on him. And the guy was naked, and so Francisco felt pretty confident that he would have seen something if the guy was wounded. But when the police arrived and they saw the body up close, they immediately saw he had several very serious and very strange physical injuries. He had these four perfectly circular one to one and a half inch diameter holes drilled into his body. There were two right above his chest, basically sitting above his armpit. There was one that was right over his belly button. So his belly button was gone. It was just a hole where it had been. And there was also one in his crotch. And these holes were not crudely done. These were done with surgical precision, almost like whoever had done it was using high-end medical tools to make these cuts. Now, oh at first glance, God. the authorities had no idea why these holes were on this guy's body. But when the autopsy was done, they discovered this man was missing the majority of his internal organs. And after doing some investigating, they discovered that all of his organs had literally been vacuumed out of him through these holes on his body. Oh, those holes nah, were... yeah, bro. Like, like, that's some UFO shit, bro. Like, what? All his organs just, just get sucked down it like a vacuum, my nigga? Basically just ports to pull things out of him. Also, most of the man's blood had been suctioned out of those holes as well. But that wasn't all. The man also had one of his ears removed, one of his eyes was removed, and the lower part of his face was also removed. And again, all of these- Bro, the visuals, bro, the visuals. Oh my God. The visuals. Ugh. These cuts looked like they had been made with absolute surgical precision. But perhaps the most brutal aspect of all the things that came to light when these documents were leaked was something that unless you looked really closely at the autopsy report, you wouldn't necessarily notice. And it had to do with this man's vagus nerve. Your vagus oh. nerve is something that controls part of your nervous system that's responsible for automatic functions like heart rate and digestion. And so when your body is suddenly in great distress, like suddenly you're fighting for your life or something, your vagus nerve can basically shut off those automatic functions like digestion in order to ensure all your energy is going towards fighting for your life. Right. But in this dead man's case, his autopsy revealed that his vagus nerve had gone absolutely wild right at the moment of his death. It's complicated, right. but this suggests that this man was very likely alive when his face was being surgically cut off oh and those holes God. were being drilled into his body and his organs were being vacuumed out. And then at some point, the excruciating pain that came from these horrible things happening to him got so, so bad his vagus nerve basically turned off his heart. So it was not these horrible physical injuries that killed him. He literally died from the pain of these physical injuries. In crazy, short, bro. his body basically killed itself. Like, can you avoid imagine somebody going through this, bro? Like, like, just imagine, bro. Just picture it in your head, y'all. Picture it in your head. Like, and like, somebody just sitting here going through that, bro. That is complete torture bro it feeling the pain it was feeling that is crazy bro oh my gosh dog i wouldn't want to wish that on my worst enemy dog that's crazy so i'm sure you're wondering how does the dead man in the reservoir and these leaked photos and the autopsy report how does all of that connect with the night of the ufos which happened two years before the man in the reservoir was even found well following the night of the ufos in 1986 farmers in brazil who lived in the areas where these famous sightings took place began reporting that their cattle were dying kind of inexplicably 
And this began happening with enough frequency in all of these areas where the UFO sightings had taken place that a theory began to develop in Brazil that maybe the UFOs that were here during the night of the UFOs have something to do with all these cows turning up dead. And as that theory began to take hold all across Brazil that, you know, UFOs are killing our cattle, another theory began to come out of that one, which was, well, if the UFOs are coming in here and killing cattle, what's stopping them from killing people? Right. And then in 1988, so two years after the night of the UFOs, and right in the middle of all these farmers all across Brazil saying their cows were dying for no reason, the dead man in the reservoir was discovered. And as soon as the government saw the physical condition this guy was in, with the weird holes drilled in his body and his organs missing and his face pulled off, that plus the fact that he was located in this reservoir, which by the way was in a night of the UFO sighting area, the government decided they would have to hide the story. A critical detail that I have Hell left no. out intentionally until right now is that the cattle who were turning up dead, they were turning up dead with circular holes drilled into their bodies, oh with my organs goodness. missing. So the same exact thing that was happening to this man was happening to all the cattle and this shit and like and, and like they felt like that they should keep this away from us. Like like we shouldn't know about this like type of shit. Like this is crit were turning up dead with circular holes drilled into their bodies with organs missing and parts of their faces removed. Meaning, clearly, whatever was happening to these cattle inside of these sighting areas had happened to this man in exactly, the reservoir. And bro. if that got out to the public, then it would confirm for many people in Brazil that, yep, the UFOs, they're the ones going after the cattle, oh, and now no, they're going man. after this us too. Crazy, and so this was bro. why the police were so secretive. Yeah, like, and that's why they didn't want to tell them what, what, they didn't want nobody to panic or something like, I'm, I'm assuming they didn't want people to panic, but it's just the fact that like, bro, we need to know about this shit, because then if anything else comes missing, um, comes up missing, we know why. Like, we know what's going on around here. We just got to try to do our best to, to try to fix the situation or, like, do what we can, even though we can't really stop it from happening. But it's just like, bro, like, like we need to be on our toes at least. Know what I mean? Like, come on body and not letting anybody see it or learn anything about it and it was also why no news was run anywhere in brazil about the story it's because the government was really trying to make sure it did not get out That's and the government crazy. was able to keep it quiet until 1994 when those photos and the autopsy report were leaked but like all things having to do with UFOs or aliens or paranormal stuff, it's like despite the evidence, those things very quickly are pushed into the kind of conspiracy theory and, and bucket. Like, and that's crazy. And they stay there. It is crazy. It's just, just like they just, just just say fuck it. It happens. Oh well. Like what, we, what can we do? Like that's crazy to me, bro. Like bro, y'all just animals and these people popping up dead and y'all just just moving on. Like what if it's one of your own? What if it's one of your own, like one of your family members, just that and the third? Like, what are you gonna do about it? He's gonna say, oh, well, that's another family member gone? Like, what? Like, come on, bro. You gotta think about this man's family, bro. Like, bro, like this man, like, bro, like his family is literally going through hell. Like, they don't know what happened to him. He just, he just, he just ended up in the field with the holes in him and shit like that. But y'all didn't wanna do, like, tell his family nothing either? Like, come on, man not want to touch that category. So even though Brazil remains an absolute hotbed for UFO sightings, Wikipedia even has a page dedicated just to tracking Brazilian UFO sightings, despite That's all crazy, that, dog. That's no one crazy, really cares. Dog. But That's if crazy. you care, Nobody cares. there is an unbelievable amount of information online about what's going on in Brazil. And if nothing else, it is just a fascinating rabbit hole to fall into. So that's gonna do it, bro. Like that is if crazy. You to me, bro. I ain't gonna lie, that's crazy to me that no one even considered to try to do anything or nothing, bro. Like the police just said, "Oh well, it's just a dead body that just popped up." Like we're not gonna do. That's crazy to me, bro. Shouts out to y'all, bro. Another Mr. Baldwin video, man. That that was completely, you know, uh, like like just just mind blowing, bro. Like tell me how you guys feel about this, bro. Like, how, like, do you guys feel like the UFOs did this? Because it sounds like some UFO shit, bro. With hoes just getting sucked out of this, out of this, like, his organs and shit getting sucked out of his body. 
That's like some shit that would happen on the UFO. But let me know how you guys feel about this, man. Like, share, comment, subscribe, gang. Make sure you guys got them bell notifications on it so I drop down, so I drop another one for you guys tomorrow. So yeah, bro. We about to get back into that little um like bag of on like Mr. Baller and on like reacts is dropping back to back to back to back. I got y'all gang and S R T gang. I am out this thing, man. Let's get it.